Hello, I'm going to talk to you about logic gates. Now, logic gates are decision-making circuits which can be used on their own or put together to form complicated circuits. I have a little setup here to show you the logic gates in action. I have two inputs, which are these two switches here, input 1 and input 2, and two LEDs above either of them to represent their state. So if the switch is off, that's down, the LED would be off, which is logic 0. If the switch is up, that would be logic 1 and the LED comes on. At the very end, you might see the LED was changing, this is the output. This output is dependent on these two inputs. The first gate I'm going to show you is the NOT gate, also known as the inverter. However, this is the one gate that has only one input. So its output is NOT its input. If the input is at logic 0, its output is at logic 1. If its input is at logic 1, its output is at logic 0. It's not. So, you see with input 1, it's down, the LED's off, so it's logic 0. So, because it's a NOT gate, the output's logic 1, because it's NOT, it's the opposite. If switch on input 1, see the LED comes on, so it's at logic 1. Because it's a NOT gate, the output is off, logic 0. What you can't see is I've got the switch here to switch in the different logic gates. So the next one is OR. With an OR gate, either inputs or both can be at logic 1 for the output to be at logic 1. So see that both switches are down, both LEDs are off. So because both inputs are logic 0, the output is also at logic 0. If I switch on, log uh, sorry, if I switch on the first switch, the first input is at logic 1, see the output is on. If I switch on the second input, so it's at logic 1, the output's also at logic 1. If I switch on both switches, so they're both at logic 1, the output is also at logic 1. Because remember with an OR gate, either inputs or both can be at logic 1 for the output to be at logic 1. So that's an OR gate. Next is the AND gate. Can you guess what's going to happen? With the AND gate, both inputs must be on for the output to be on. So, if input 1 is on, see it's logic 1, the output's still off. Output is still off, sorry. If input 2 is on, see, output is still off. But if both inputs are on, the output comes on. So with an AND gate, both inputs must be on for the output to be on at logic 1. OK, now, the first gate I showed you was the NOT gate, also known as the inverter. The NOT gate can be placed at the input or output of other gates to form different gates. If you place a NOT gate at the output of an AND gate, you get a NAND gate. Now remember the AND gate, both inputs have to be at logic 1 for the output to be at logic 1. With a NAND gate, because it has a NOT gate at the output of the AND gate, either inputs can be on or both off for the output to be at logic 1, but if both, but if both inputs are at logic 1, the output is off. So I'll show you that now. See, both inputs are off, the output is on. Switch on one input, the output's still on. Other one, output's still on. Switch them both on, and the output goes off. Can you see how that's the opposite of the AND game? Next is the NOR gate. The NOR gate is effectively a NOT gate at the output of an OR gate. So if the OR gate, either or both inputs could be on for the output to be on. But with a NOR gate, the only time the output is on, at logic 1, is when both inputs are off. 
see I have here both inputs are off see and the outputs on if I switch on any input the output will go off including if both inputs are on the outputs still off so there you go some basic logic gates which can be used on their own or put together to form complex circuits I hope you enjoyed this video if you need any help or want to know a bit more then just please ask and that's bye for now bye